Since 2019, lawmakers and social justice advocates have been urging the state to create a dedicated task force to look at New Jersey's history of slavery, its continued impact on black residents, and the need for reparations. But the topic remains controversial in political circles. And instead, the Murphy administration focused on wealth disparity, examining how structural racism contributes to economic inequities. Well, reparations are not a novel concept in America. The U.S. government gave them to Japanese Americans as an apology for incarcerating them during World War II. Our social justice reporter Taylor Jung takes a look at the renewed efforts toward reparations and shares the parallels in her family's personal story to today's movement. Taylor joins me now. Taylor, uh, it's so good to have you on the show. Uh, your work on this was impeccable. Uh, talk to me about the parallels you drew in your own family's story uh, between the reparation work we see going on right now and the Japanese American redress movement uh, that your grandmother uh, very much went through. Yeah, I, th I think it was almost impossible to not report on reparations without also mentioning that it, you know, my family was able to receive them. And I think that's something that more Japanese Americans are talking about is just the fact that we were able to receive them because of the model minority myth, this whole idea that, you know, not just Japanese Americans, but Asian Americans are hardworking, quiet, reserved, and that idea and stereotype was actually born in anti-blackness. So as soon as those comparisons were drawn, oh, look, Japanese Americans were able to, you know, start their lives over, become successful. Why couldn't black Americans do the same after slavery? And we were able to be given those reparations because of our, you know, good work, quote unquote. Um, so I just felt like at a certain point, I had to also mention that the Japanese American story and of reparations was also tied to anti-Black sentiment. Yeah, I mean, in one part of your uh, personal essay about your grandmother who was in an internment camp in World War II, you wrote about the check that she received from the government, that it felt like a flippant attempt at compensation for a life interrupted. When you started talking to advocates and even lawmakers um, who have been, as you write, you know, brave enough to, to dive into this. Um, what did you find with where the work has been halted? You know, it was the word reparations that seemed to be unsatisfactory or un uncomfortable for, for other lawmakers. It was something that um, New Jersey Institute for so Social Justice's Ryan Haygood mentioned in his conversations with um, Speaker Craig Coughlin that, you know, while he supported the idea, it seemed like other lawmakers were just uncomfortable about giving uh, compensation of some sort to black New Jerseyans. So, um, and not just you know, the compensation. I mean, you wrote that even just using the word reparations uh, was taboo, that, that lawmakers pushed to have it called pretty much anything else uh, as far as the task force goes that's looking into this. Right. And I think Governor Murphy's solution to that was the Wealth Disparity Task Force, which is taking a look at why the racial wealth gap exists for not just Black New Jerseyans, but also um, Latinx and other uh, non-white New Jerseyans. And I think what advocates are saying is that they just want attention paid towards those who are Black and who have maybe, you know, family members that were enslaved at one point. Um, it's something that I think that Black new people and across America have always been lumped in with other movements in, in terms of civil rights. And I think they're just asking for like, hey, can you give us the time of day and just focus on us and what we're experiencing? Taylor Jung, uh, thanks for your great reporting. Thanks for sharing it with us. Uh, we appreciate it. Great. Thank you so much.